Hi, boys and girls. All right. This little talk is called Keep Them Alive. I'm here out in front of the Bartow, Florida, DeVita Dialysis Clinic. Got the, got the stop the blood things on my arm. This is called Keep Them Alive. I was coming out of the clinic. I'm like, okay, Lord, I got so many things on my heart. Yahweh, what do you want me to do? And I heard, make a... honesty workshop video that anybody can see all right this is really fast number one god crashed in on me number two i ended up getting a tour of the church mess in america number three he sent me into an atmosphere where there's all these outlaws and crazies and drug addicts and i'm having better church with them than i ought, than i am with people that are doing church normally because they're desperate. They don't want to overdose. They don't want to get locked up again. And they want to restore their families. So they're desperate. And they want to try all the goodies from Jesus of Nazareth and the Holy Spirit as best they can to try to stay free. Okay? So, I mean, I suffered. Some precious friends of mine have died. Beautiful young kids with babies have died in their bed, you know, next to their four-year-old kid, all right? So that, that pisses me off, that makes me frustrated, and I start yelling at God and saying, how do I stop that, man? How do I stop that? And you know what I'm told? Jesus of Nazareth instituted constant conscience cleansing before prayer, and before this communion thing that is understood as like a totally mystical empowerment this breaking of bread communion thing that's why you've got all these ancient sacramental church lineages that that do the mystical communion meal but then they've got this crust of like gold and costumes and liturgies all over on top of it so it becomes this big confusing thing but if you boil it down to a little practice that you do in your home you get together you admit your trouble since your last communion time and you take this food of heaven taste which is connected with angels and supernatural strength and empowerment for you but most importantly to go help you befriend others and help them be friends of the spirit that just told me to do this video for you all right so radical honesty workshop here's how it goes number one you get a group of people together 12 is way maximum you know eight people is great elder and younger male and female all ages both genders okay first part is the family storytelling workshop six questions number one Hey, what is a favorite place in the world that you've been to that you really love that you would take us all to because you love that place? It can be just like a place under your favorite tree. It could be your grandmom's kitchen. It could be, you know, some place you visited or, uh, you know, the little honey spot in the lake where you always catch your best fish or whatever. What's a favorite place of yours in the whole world? And you go around the room and each person tells a quick description, you know, a couple paragraphs, you know, a few minutes, three minutes or something like that, uh, of a place that they really love. So you hear what's in people's hearts of favorite places. Then, here's, so here's the list. You do it like that with each question. A favorite place that you would take us to. A scary time in your life. A wonderful person they got brought into your life, an embarrassing time in your life, and you preface the embarrassing thing with this. Okay, the embarrassing thing might have like a naked thing or a sex thing or kind of a difficult thing that you, do, you usually don't talk about in it, but, and you don't have to talk about the worst thing, the most worst, most embarrassing thing that ever happened to you, but be courageous and let people here know what you've been through because when we hear what others have been through it changes our lives it motivates us it causes us to become
people who are compassionate and have understanding of the things that people go to. I mean, this whole Bible thing that I used to hate and push away, it's all storytelling. It's the stories of people in crisis who end up getting guidance and answers right from highest spirit, the great spirit, Elohim, the highest spirit of all spirits, which is a, which is a general term that means, you know, God or Yahweh or what have you. Now, if there's an atheist in your midst, well, fine. I mean, it's awesome. Just learning how to just be honest is a most important thing. This is a thing that I do with families that have somebody in the rehab center. The families might not ever go to church or anything like that, but if we can put together little honesty times in the home, you know, everybody's not going to talk about, tell on their, themselves about everything. But if we regularly say, okay, I disappointed myself about this thing or that thing, then the person who tends to go get some drugs might not overdose. That's how important this is. But more importantly, if you're in Christianity, you're already in trouble. Because people are overdosing on empty spiritual practices and they're not actually taking control of their lives and they don't really know how to refresh and transform people and turn them into friends of God. And like the whole atmosphere, honesty, is lousy. It's bad. It's a dangerous atmosphere where you'll die by being tricked into thinking you're okay and you're just going along in some of these religious practices, you know, a bunch of which are actually good and strong, but you can't leave out stuff. So, all right, so the six questions are a favorite place, a scary time, a special person, an embarrassing time, a supernatural moment, ghost story, meeting somebody you didn't know for a long time, like a supernatural moment, healings. Um, and then the last one is a happiest time. So you go around the room, and as you're here, each person, give a little story on each one of those things. Gosh, you instantly just, you have all these questions. You think, wow, that's an interesting place. And when it comes to the embarrassing thing, like when the grandmom tells her story, the grandkid is like, um... You know, nanny, nanny, you know, what did you do and, and what did they say and da, 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 da. So, so it promotes compassion and more communication. And, you know, and then the granny will say, oh, my gosh, you know, that embarrassing thing didn't happen to me until I was like 38 years old and you're 12. So, you know, there's a there's a elder and younger wisdom. There's an understanding across the gender lines of what the women go through and the embarrassing things they have to deal with, the, what the men go through and the embarrassing things they deal with. And this builds compassion. This is from the Holy Spirit. I mean, he actually gave me this download of how to do this thing just because I'm grieving over people who die you know, because they've gone into a rehab center and then they go back into standard Christianity as usual and they fall through the cracks and they end up killing themselves in an overdose because they don't have the elements that Jesus taught in their lives. So the first part is the family storytelling workshop. The second part is the, uh, the sozo list. And we just say together as a group, there are five things. Sozo from... Um, from um, Bethel Church in Redding, California, has a team of people that do this sozo thing, and the Holy Spirit told me that there is one thing that is enormously missing, which which is like a spirit of pride, which is one of the most sneaky power spirits. So the five areas where an unclean spirit generally attaches to a human life are these, and after we go through this list, we're not going to like evaluate or counsel every person, but when you hear one of these things, if there's something really significant that you feel you want other people to hear about, about a, a part of your life, um, you can tell it. So the five things, the five things are anger, bitterness, revenge, unforgiveness. So an angry heart is one place that unclean spirits can attach to. An angry heart Life traumas, that means any kind of trauma, like your best friend went away when you were in third grade and you feel like you never had another best friend again, a spirit can attach to you that's causing you to rove around and try and figure out who's going to be my best friend and who's going to be my best friend. 
and not actually accepting that you've got the peace of God and all other good things in you. So, anger, bitterness, revenge, hard-heartedness, life traumas, sex events. Yes, everybody has like surprise sex events. You know, so many people have surprise sex events. Those events unclean spirits can get attached to whether it's like you know a cheerful pleasure giving spirit a terrified you know I hate men spirit so many different spirits can come over a person because of sex events and then there's also a cult alright we're trying to be friends with the highest spirit who is over all other spirits but if you start using the powers of lower spirits then those spirits can stay attached to you until you actually renounce them and get kind of a cleansing but the last one is your strengths. In the areas where you feel strong and you know you have really, really good abilities, you may actually end up being the worst in the worst behavior because you're not going to let somebody else try to do what you're skilled at. You're going to rise up and say, look, I know how to handle this situation. And the Holy Spirit or the sweet one, I call God, God, the sweet one, God, the sweet one, may be trying to say to you, draw back. And many times, troubling spirits can attach in the areas where you're strong. Are you strong at making money? Are you strong because you've got a lot of assets? Are you strong because you're a good administrator? Are you strong because you're a kind and tender person? Whereas many people are not. Okay, so that Sozo list is a thing that you speak out loud, you talk about it a little bit, and anyone in the room who wants to talk about, okay, you know, I want to tell you about one of my life traumas, or I want to tell you about a sex event, or I want to tell you all about, you know, uh, an area where I'm strong that I know that has actually made me prideful and hurt other people. Okay, so that's the third part. And then, the, I mean, the second part. And the third part is turning the Sermon on the Mount into one-liners. Like, Jesus says, you have heard it said, do not take a knife and kill somebody. But now I say to you, if you've got so much anger in your heart that you end up saying, you jerk, you asshole, or something like that, that anger in your heart is considered murder in the eyes of the, of the sweet one. And so the one-liners in the, in the uh, you know, like uh, lustful thought equals wrecking a marriage, both yours and the person that you have lustful thought over. Um, you know, you make a list of one-liners. And I do have uh, the Sermon on the Mount turned into a list of one-liners, and I will put that in the um, descriptions. This is a launching place, this, this, these three parts. And our goal is this, to have at least two 15 or 20 minute honesty throwdown times a week in the home. And when you get together for your little honesty throwdown time, there's two parts to it. Number one, you recite this little script that says something like, look, we are going to totally support one another. Even if you've done something that would get you locked up, we love you and we'll walk you through the difficulties. Don't hide anything. We declare to people who believe in all this Jesus, God, church, and Bible stuff, that in the Garden of Eden, in your origin, you were designed for no death, no pain, no confusion about who you belong to, that you share pleasure with, no greed, no nothing, no evil at all, right? So in that time, no human being was going to have to carry a scary, ugly, hurty, sad thing in their hearts. As a matter of fact, no human being has the ability to carry a sad, hurty, scary, ugly thing in their hearts. And as a matter of fact, that's why we make this declaration. When we come together for our honesty time, we're putting things out on the table so that others can carry it because we can't carry it alone. If we try to carry things alone, if we try to carry things alone, we're going to get sick, physically sick. You're, we're going to have... Our behavior is start, going to start getting weird, and you might even have unclean spirits reattaching or attaching to you. So in this atmosphere, number one, we're going to support one another, but then the script that you got to learn is really great. Just say this out loud. I disappointed myself when I, okay? So when you have your little honesty times, there's no crosstalk, there's nobody criticizing, there's nobody saying, oh, you shouldn't have done this, and you need to do more of that, and da 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 each person individually, from the tiniest child to the greatest adult, and this is all from the Holy Spirit, 
Each person says, I disappointed myself when I yelled at my sister on the telephone or when I went and hung out with those people that I might have done drugs with alone. You know, I told you kids that if I go and hang out with anybody on this list by myself, that's a no-no. I can go hang out with them as a way of loving them out of their drug addiction. But if I go and text or hang out with somebody alone on this list, I'm going to admit that fault and say I disappointed myself when I went and hung out with those people because I might have used drugs. So that is the whole picture. That is the goal. The family honesty uh, the family honesty time is basically a picture of taking what Jesus commanded at least two times a week, which is honesty, and then this closed secret communion meal. The core of the gathered peoples or the church, which means people coming together, the called out, the special called out people who cluster together, the core of that is an honesty meal that is understood as having supernatural powers and benefits for the human soul. So that's a quick tour of the Family Honesty Project, the Radical Honesty Project, and this is probably what, what I was hearing in the Holy Spirit was, this is the most important thing that I can share repetitively with the families. I mean, even if you don't believe in God, even if you don't like do this little communion thing, just the practice of having honesty regularly in the home is the highest and most difficult thing to do. It's easier to teach somebody how to raise the dead in the name of Jesus than it is to teach them how to tell on themselves and say, I disappointed myself. And all of these details have come for you from the Holy Spirit. I beg you, I adjure you, I strongly hope that you will put this thing into practice. You can do it anywhere, anytime, any group of people. All the best, peace be with you. All the best, peace be with you. Where's my cursor? There it is.